What is going on everyone? We got a new analysis coming at you covering Bitcoin, Bitcoin dominance. Take a look at Ethereum and some alts that we like. Also going to be talking about Vixie Dixie, the SPY, the NASDAQ. All in all, just going to be a quick little update from our video that we posted about two weeks ago now. Uh, everything's been playing out perfectly though. Really happy with how everything's been playing out. So without further ado, scan this QR code for some free PCC. And let's get into it. Two weeks ago, we were talking about the Nasdaq and how it was breaking market structure to the upside, and we were we were starting to explore that higher high. So we've had two weekly candles close since then, really retesting this twelve point eight region. And assuming assuming we finish this week green, because I'm recording this video on April thirteenth, assuming we close this week green, I do assume we are going to continue progressing towards the next level of resistance. The major confirmation here. Let me zoom all the way in and close this indicator here. Um, that we'd have this confirmation would be next week when we get this weekly candle if we break above last week's high so 13.2 is the key level for nasdaq as a like a more macro confirmation that we are going to be ranging up to the next resistance uh, we weren't liking spy that much these are spy futures on the weekly because we thought this was definitely lagging uh, we had yet to make that higher high and when we made this video this is where we were trading so we had we had some big move to the upside and we're starting to test this level of resistance at 4200 and if spy can break this level and hold it like we've said spy has been lagging the nasdaq there's not as much appetite for risk in spy because of the banks they dilute the the growth of the etf itself versus nasdaq is much more risk on so honestly i'd be happy if the spy consolidates in and around 42 40 4200 um, before taking another look up uh, hard to speculate how much gas the nasdaq has because it's a uh, its volume and attention is diluted compared to more risk on assets but hey spies bullish nasdaq bullish we're bullish uh, the other thing that i have been keeping a close eye on is um us dollar currency index dixie uh, and so we are talking about this on some of our tiktok streams and kick streams be sure to subscribe to kick if you haven't um, about how oh that literally just happened on stream oh baby we just printed uh, a new all-time low against this candle here um, so this is kind of our idea is that if the dollar is strong then assets are going to suffer but if the dollar is weak then assets are going to do well there's a negative correlation there it's not perfect but this, this is just more context and confluence to our trade so dxy broke this low i think we're going to go down maybe towards 100 towards 99 retest it as resistance and then we'll evaluate this downside when the time comes uh, in line with this idea the vix i did buy some vix calls at 18.5 and i'm underwater on them it's currently trading at 17.1 which i'm fine with they expired two weeks out and so that's basically my hedge right now is i'm quite risk on with my crypto picks but if there is going to be volatility there's going to be volatility in the traditional markets as well so i don't want to be shorting resistance after resistance on crypto because that's the easiest way to get liquidated so you look for an asymmetric upside asset instead the vix uh trading at 17.8 honestly i still think it's criminally undervalued but that kind of goes against the rest of my thesis which is risk on gold and silver uh gold is only like let's see four percent no 1.5 percent away from all-time high definitely within striking range and silver silver broke market structure here so personally i'm not a commodities man but i know commodities traders are loving this bullish price action crazy price exploration kind of a sign of the times despite us getting good economic numbers from the fed people are aware of the weak fundamentals maybe and that inflation is going to be around for longer cpi month over month came or sorry, year over year came in at five percent versus six percent in february five percent in march but core was actually elevated so that's cpi without food and energy proving our uh, our thesis that inflation is going to be sticky <sighs> deep breath quick sip of bubbly let's go moving on to the meat and potatoes the shit you guys actually care about it's probably me just being a boomer talking about the stock market like an absolute knob um so this is i guess we'll start with a naked bitcoin chart um last week we were kind of looking at this volatility contraction uh we, were, we marked all these higher lows higher highs but we ended up breaking to the upside great for the bulls and now we are kind of in this price discovery uh, personally our original target in that video was between 30 and 32k so i've already started to de-risk a little bit we did break this consolidation to the upside but if we pull up our volume we will notice that it's actually dwindling quite a bit 
we aren't getting the same volume that pushed us to new highs. Um, sell volume is decreasing on the longer time frame. Let me mark that. Make it red so it's nice and clear. Make it red so it's nice and clear. Uh, while while the buy volume has been coming and going. So I, I want crypto to keep going, but um, personally, it kind of looks like Bitcoin is running out of legs. In line with this idea, we have been watching Bitcoin dominance. And we, we were really noticing how it was oscillating between 40 and 48. This, this trend started back in 2021, in May 2021. Boom, 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 boom. And it was right, right I mean, even right now, it's turning at 47.22. So if we zoom on into a smaller time frame, this is the four hour now. Let me close this indicator here. Um, right, we're just making higher highs. It looks like we topped out at 49.07. We've rejected it pretty convincingly. There's two possibilities here. One, this is a retest of this range, 47.8, and we resume back up. Next best, so if it's this yellow line here where that is a retest of that range and we start trending back up, that is bad for alt because that is a Bitcoin dominated market. Well, if we do see, see some kind of retest as a resistance structure here, and we revert back down to the mean, that is great for alts. That's where we'd see an alt season. And personally, I think that is the more likely situation. Bitcoin's been seeing strength, and it's really hard to determine if it's because there's not as much liquidity as there used to be for flow over into alts, with that like iconic like Bitcoin to alts to small caps chart, or if it's Bitcoin strength as a function of the U.S. bank insolvencies and that narrative playing out. Your guess is as good as mine. That being said, Ethereum did have its Shanghai update. This was one This was one chart that I think it was on TikTok when we charted it out. It was back during this retest here, this retest here, uh, right? Super clear resistance, super clear resistance here, right? This was 1840. S broke above the high, sweep the low, back up, boom. It had its Shanghai update, so now people can unstake their Ethereum. Um, but I made a di different video on that. I don't need to talk about it. So other than that, things are looking pretty good. I do think I am more alt favored now than uh, Bitcoin flavor. Bitcoin flavored. I love Bitcoin flavoring. Uh, one alt that I've been talking about over and over again on the Kickstream is Global Finance. Uh, I initially got in down here, a little bit higher appetite for risk, staked that shit, deployed the large capital, and it's really entering price discovery. So. Um, from 7.3 to current price action at almost 40%. Uh, it's trading right now. Let me get some information so I'm not giving you fake news. CoinGecko Level Finance. No fake news in this channel. We're trading at 51 mil market cap. Love it. I'm bullish. Level Finance. Uh, other areas, other other products in this niche. These are decentralized. Perpetuals. GMX, baby. Let's go. Only three, less than 4% away from all-time high. I'm a giga GMX bull. Long and strong. Long and strong since $20. Staked. Nice passive income on the GMX. These deep perps are exhibiting really high relative strength. Love to see it. The other big winner that's been exhibiting crazy relative strength and is entering price discovery is Arbitrum. Similar idea. People in the Discord, uh, we were talking about, we basically bought all the way down uh, following the, the airdrop. I still have a lot of my airdrop. Um, and now it's starting to enter price discovery to the upside. So obviously I think what it's done so far, like it's bottom to top right now is around 40%. That's crazy for its market cap, but hey, love to see it. So overall, I do have a pretty high appetite to risk in the crypto market and I'm hedged to the downside in traditional finance instruments. Uh, what I am saying now is financial analysis and not advice. This is just what I'm doing. The choice you make is your own. Uh, but overall, risk on, and I'm pretty comfy being risk on. Thank you for watching. Show some support. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun with these YouTube videos, and frankly, I think there is a lot of value into them. And if there is, drop a comment. Let me know. Stay safe. Take care. Thank you for watching.